Good morning and happy Friday from Pastor Jonathan at Robertsdale UMC. Uh, this is today's Daily Devo, and first I want to apologize for those of you who are waiting for a Daily Devo yesterday. Yesterday was June 18th. Yesterday also happened to be my birthday, and I decided, I guess because I'm naively optimistic, that first thing in the morning on my birthday would be a fine time for a dental filling. My first dental filling ever. And because I had never had a filling, I didn't realize what all that would entail. So I got in the car to leave the dentist. I was preparing to come back and do Daily Devo when I looked in the mirror and thought, I won't be doing a Daily Devo <laughs> anytime soon. <laughs> I look like, uh, the dentist said I look like Elvis. Uh, I felt like I looked like I had gotten socked in the mouth by a boxer. In any event, the filling is fine. Um, I wouldn't recommend that. If you've never had a filling and the dentist is scheduling you for a filling and they happen to mention your birthday, just put it on another day. Just my recommendation. That's free advice. There you go. You can do what you want. That, that's just my opinion. At any rate, here I am. This is uh, Friday, June 19th, 2020, and I thank you for joining me today. So I get to share something that God has actually been sharing with me for a few days now. I've had time to think about it since I wasn't with you live uh, yesterday. And tomorrow my family is leaving for vacation. Uh, so I just want you to know that we'll be pausing for Daily Devo uh, and then I will join you again Monday, June 22nd. Yeah, is when I'll see you again for Daily Devo. In the meantime, uh, we've got sermons on both Sundays, worship live at 10 at Robert So UMC, our Facebook page, our website, our YouTube channel, uh, and also Bible studies will continue live on Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. Uh, and you'll get to hear from our youth and family director, Wes Anderson. So I, I'm looking very much forward to what he's having to teach and preach, what God is putting uh, in his soul to deliver to us. So I want to talk to you today about seed. Uh, this is the, the idea that, that I've been uh, just thinking about a lot. And uh, I'm going to tell you my context, but I'm also going to offer for you to think about your context as we share this word together. Um, and that is that for me, I'm, I'm a young dad. I'm a, a dad with a young family. I've got three kids. Uh, they, they range in age uh, all the way from toddler to late elementary, approaching middle school uh, in the next couple of years and, and in between. Um, I'm also a pastor. Um, but the, the call for all of us as Christians uh, is to sow seed. So Jesus has this parable of the sower. Uh, and he tells this parable in the Gospels about a sower who went out to sow seed. And uh, it, it could also rightly be called the parable of the four types of soil, or the parable of the soils. Uh, because in the parable, the seed is the same, but the seed falls on four different types of soil. There's four different scenarios. And Jesus tells the parable, his disciples are confused, and so then he repeats the parable uh, with detailed explanation for his disciples so they understand what he's talking about explicitly. Uh, so the different types of soil represent different types of people. And the seed is the gospel. It's the good news. It's the salvation message of God and his activity in the world. And it's the, it's the kingdom of God that Jesus came to not only proclaim but also to demonstrate and to usher in by his very presence, teaching, and ministry. So he talks about the four types of soil. And I heard this parable uh, in a teaching session with lots of other pastors uh, years ago in a very freeing way. And the, the way that I heard the parable was that we are responsible for the seed, not the soil. And that was very liberating as a young pastor. Um, and, and again, this doesn't just apply to pastors. This is how I heard it in my context. But it applies to all Christians because we all have a mandate to sow seed. Uh, but we're not responsible for the soil. And I also connect that to John 15, where Jesus is talking to his disciples uh, the night before his crucifixion. And one of the things he says to them is, I am the vine and you are the branches. Uh, if you abide in me, you will bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. Abide in me and you will bear much fruit. And the imperative command in that passage is not bear fruit. And I think if, if uh, for me, if I'm being honest, I have a... a I have a tendency to fall into the performance trap, and that's not just a personality issue, uh, that's a cultural issue, that, that we have uh, lived in a society for years now that has created this performance trap where uh, we get way overly conscious of our production and our productivity and what we're doing and what we offer, um, perfectionism, anxiety, type A personalities, all those things are created by the society in which we live and amped up by that. Uh, and some of us are wired in such a way 
uh, that that tends to be even worse and manifest in particular ways. So it's liberating, again, in John 15, to realize that the command is not to be fruitful. The command is to abide in Jesus, to remain in him. And the result is you will bear much fruit. So again, it, it flips the, the, the formula to say you're not responsible for the outcome. You're responsible for being faithful. And then finally, as I was driving the other day, uh, I was actually driving one of my kids uh, to a, a lesson of some sort uh, that they were involved in. And I was just thinking about them and I was thinking about the challenges of parenthood. And in my context, I realized that I don't pay enough attention to the fact that everything I say and everything I do is planting a seed of some kind. And I realize that there are whole situations that can be traced back to a single seed. Uh, and as Paul said in his letters, um, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gives the increase. And so there are multiple people at multiple stages in our personal growth and our spiritual growth that have different roles to play. Maybe it's one word of encouragement that, that one person spoke to you that just propelled you into uh, a new season of spiritual growth. Likewise, one word of discouragement or one word of criticism or one word um, that's abusive in nature can just have this profound impact and, and cause us to spiral. And if enough of those mount up, they can really lead us to a different place. And so I, I was just really awakened to the power of every word and every action being a seed for parents, which you may not be, but for parents, we are constantly planting seeds. Our children, especially in their early years, are in some of the most formative seasons of their whole life. And the seeds we plant will grow into and produce fruit that will follow them throughout their whole life. And that's not to say that God can't change that or redeem it, uh, but a lot can be traced back to those seasons. And so it makes me analyze uh, how often am I correcting my children and in what way am I correcting them? Am I guiding them? Are they hearing, are they hearing from their parents a voice of encouragement or a voice of criticism? And how is that shaping the inner voice that will for them be paired with the voice of the Lord and how they'll learn to hear Him? And so am I teaching them that God has an overly critical voice or an encouraging voice and a come on you can do it because I'm with you kind of voice? Uh, does that make sense? I hope it does. So for you in your context, I wonder how this applies. Uh, can you evaluate your roles? Maybe you're not a pastor. Uh, maybe you are not a parent. Or maybe you are a parent, but your children are grown, and now you're in the grandparent or even the great-grandparent season of life. Uh, look around and evaluate your roles. Evaluate your relationships in this season that God has you. Uh, evaluate your circles of influence, whatever those are, whether that's family, coworkers, friends, uh, community organizations that you're a part of, maybe your church, different groups uh, in which you find belonging uh, and influence and ask yourself, what seed am I planting? One of the most haunting verses in the Bible to me in the New Testament uh, is found in the book of Hebrews chapter 12 and it talks about a root of bitterness. And I, I, I'm just hyper aware that roots of bitterness come from seeds of negativity or resentfulness or um, toxicity of some kind and uh, anyway I, I share all of these verses the, the parable of the sower John 15 with the vine and the branches um, the root of bitterness all of these are about seed and so the question today to wrap it all up and to sum it all up is what seed are you sowing what seeds are you planting uh, with your words and your actions uh, are they seeds of positivity or are they seeds of negativity are they seeds in this season uh, that are being fed by other seeds, perhaps by our culture or media or the way people are reacting to the crazy circumstances in which we find ourselves? Or are you receiving the seed from the Lord? Are you receiving His message? Are you continuing to remind yourself and feed yourself on His promises? And then are you scattering that seed so that others uh, can find that fruit in their life from the words and actions that you are sowing. So, so well today. That's my invitation. That's my challenge. Have a great Friday. Have a great weekend. Have a great week. Uh, and I will see you again uh, about a week from now. God bless you. This is Pastor Jonathan. Grace and peace.